Hey, this is Pastor Will Barron, and welcome you to another segment of Living Free, where we pull principles, promises, and spiritual insights. Take it from my new book, Living Free, that will help us to maximize the gift of freedom and live a fulfilling life in Christ. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the chapter on forgiveness from the book. We started the first week talking about forgiveness in general, and then last week, we talked about the consequences of unforgiveness, and we're going to pick it up there uh, uh, and then probably finish out talking about this next week. A couple of foundational scriptures. Uh, this is Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seven times seventy. So Jesus is telling Peter, it's not about a number that you can remember. It's about a mandate to learn to live the lifestyle of a forgiver. In Matthew 6, 14 and 15, it says this. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. So this scripture is is, is plain. I mean, there, there really is no real interpretation needed. It, it's, it says it very clearly. If you forgive, you will be forgiven. If you do not forgive, then you won't be forgiven your sins. Now. We understand the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross when he shed his blood for our forgiveness. But the scripture is saying, if you're not willing to do for others what Jesus has already done for you, you forfeit the benefit of the sacrifice Jesus made on your behalf. Amen. Now, as we were reading through the book, I focused on a couple of pieces in the book. And I'm going to pick it up on, I, I gave uh, 10 signs of unforgiveness or 10 consequences of unforgiveness. And I didn't read number 10, and I'm going to read that one today. It says, unforgiveness creates a stronghold. Unforgiveness is one of the biggest strongholds in the body of believers for two reasons. First, we all have been hurt or will be hurt and forced to choose between forgiveness or unforgiveness. Secondly, uh, when we do not forgive, we close the door on God while opening the door to Satan. This allows us to hold on to the ungodly thoughts, actions, and attitudes towards others and justify our ungodly behaviors. The word stronghold comes from the Greek word orachoma, which means a castle, fortress, or anything on which one relies or the arguments and reasoning by which a disputant endeavors to fortify his opinion and defend it against his opponent. A stronghold is something that holds us strongly to a place, position, or premise while resisting all outside input. The stronghold could be the result of a lie, false doctrine, or a mindset or mindset that has created a fortified wall around our minds with the express with the expressed intent of keeping our truth, healing, restoration, and deliverance. Here's the kicker. Simply put, strongholds keep us locked in and God locked out. Unforgiveness creates a fortified wall that holds us to the source of pain while locking out God, the source of deliverance and healing and restoration we need from that pain. Amen. Amen. That's that's powerful. A stronghold keeps us locked in and God locked out. We want to walk in unforgiveness. And when you want to walk in unforgiveness, you're also making an unconscious decision to resist the grace you need, to resist the comfort you need, to resist the, the healing that you need, to resist the peace that you need, to not only get you through this thing, but move you forward in what God wants to do currently in your life and what God wants to do moving forward in your life. Amen. So let's look at uh, a few signs or a few indicators that we're walking in unforgiveness. Number one is your prayers are not being answered. We talked about it in Psalm 66 when it said, if I had not regarded my sin, God would not have heard me when I reached out to prayer. In other words, if you know that you're walking in sin, if you know that you're walking in willful disregard of God's word for your life, when you sit down and pray, the scripture says, if you know this and you don't address this, God resists or God makes a decision not to listen to your prayers. That's powerful and that's scary. Number two is, Peace is easily interrupted in certain situations or around certain people. It's just funny. And when the Lord gave me this, if you're at choir rehearsal and you think you've forgiven one of the choir members for something they said that was out of order or out of pocket, you forgive them. You know, Now you're at choir rehearsal and that person shows up 
and all of a sudden you start getting uncomfortable you start feeling funny you start feeling those feelings of anger rising back up in you it doesn't mean you're a bad person it means you may have forgiven them in your head but it may not have settled in your heart you just have to go back and check yourself and make sure that you let that offense go so you can move on one another one is you're prone to illness another one is uh, unprovoked outburst of anger or violence. This is powerful. This is powerful. And I'll just read this one. If we find ourselves angry and cannot identify an external or current source of the anger, there must be an internal source driving this emotion. If nothing has just happened, that means we must be responding to something that happened sometime in the past. Also, when we find ourselves regularly making mountains out of molehills, is because we are not responding to the molehills themselves. We're responding to the mountains the unforgiveness have built. We're responding to the mountains the unforgiveness has built. You know, I said it last week, and I'll, I'll say it again. Unforgiveness is not about the offense. Unforgiveness is not about the offender. Unforgiveness is God's way of keeping you from being stuck at the point of pain so he can move you forward in peace, power, and prosperity through the grace that he makes available for you. Amen and amen. Let me read one more. Often brings up past hurts or harms during unrelated conversations. Often brings up past hurts for harms doing unrelated conversations. Have you ever been around somebody and you're talking about what God is doing in your life or what God wants to do in your life and you're celebrating and you're praising God? And that person keeps, keeps going back to a time when somebody hurt them, a time when a pastor mistreated them or a church member or a family member. In other words, you're looking at what God is doing now. You're forecasting what God wants to do moving forward. And instead of being able to appreciate that, instead of being able to enjoy that like it should be enjoyed, their mind keeps going back to some past or unrelated issue. That means they're still stuck. They're a stronghold. They're still struck at the point, stuck at the point of pain, and they're not able to move forward. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean they're a vindictive person. What it means is they're stuck and they're not able to move forward. Why is it so important that we identify some of the aspects or some of the elements of a person being, being caught in unforgiveness so we know how to pray for them, so we know how to talk to them, so we know how to help them let go of the past so they can move forward in the promises that God has made for them and their lives. Amen and amen. Now we'll pick it up next week and we'll talk about developing the mindset of a forgiver. But for now, let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we just pray that you would search us, Lord God, that you would check our hearts, Lord God, and if there's any sign, Lord God, that we're harboring unforgiveness, Lord, we pray that you would reveal it to us, Lord, that we would be able to see it. And then we just lean on you and rely on you, Lord God, for the grace and the strength to let it go, Lord God. We set ourselves, Lord God, to believe that what you want to do in our lives now and moving forward, Lord God, is more important than the things that you've already brought us through, Lord God. So we set ourselves, Lord God, to trust you, rely on you, Lord God, and in you learn how to live the lives of forgivers. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook at Living Free, and don't forget to go to my website, williamtbanham.com, and order your copy today. Amen. Be blessed. See you next week.